Hey Selenians, how's it going? It is Crane here, community manager here at the moment. I am back with another solely focused podcast. Today we're going to talk about the constituents and the news behind our solely index token. It has been a week, but it's really the start of the week, so I can't really say that. But we've got lots of stuff going on. It is back to summer temperatures here in Taiwan. I think it's getting warm pretty much everywhere else. But as you can see from the chart, the Russia-Ukraine news is having its toll on the market, the crypto market, the rising gas prices. I saw somebody mention that they're expecting California gas to be $10 to $12 a gallon by the time it hits the summer. That would be pretty terrible, but I think we can expect intervention by the American government or just really governments around the world to prevent the rising costs in fuel to influence the economy, influence inflation as well. They could intercede on behalf of people in as much as they can because when they do intercede they'll have to absorb some of the price action and that will increase uh, sovereign debt which is an issue itself but an issue for a economics podcast which is not where we are we are very much low-key easily focused podcast something easy for you to listen to and understand some of the major projects in the solana ecosystem so as usual we're going to talk about our solar index token first and then from there we're going to keep going okay so um, Soli is sitting at $4.57 on March 15th, 2022. You can see it's down 4.3%. Total market cap is $627,000.81. Our current constituents are still the same. It last rebalanced on March 1st. So the next rebalance will be in about roughly just under three weeks. The constituents are the same as usual. Marinate, Stick, Solana, Serum, Radium, Tulip, and Solent. So first we are going to have a look at our marinade news so today's marinade news is a little bit different so it says uh, this is from bitcoin.com one of the major sort of news outlets when it comes to cryptocurrency more than 80 percent of the funds locked in decentralized finance right DeFi, are kept on five chains right so now those of you who are not familiar with crypto know that a lot of like really serious crypto people they emphasize the decentralized aspect of crypto you know decentralized means that nobody controls the majority of anything and DeFi is big it's bigger than nfts of course nfts are slowly catching up but this what this means is basically 80 percent of the money in DeFi is kept on five chains if something happened to those five chains that's 80 percent of the money gone wiped out see you later so we're talking about msol right and the reason that is it says Solana is the fifth largest DeFi blockchain in mid-March 2022 with a 6.69 billion TVL or 3.37% of aggregate held in DeFi today. Solana's top DEX is Serum and the blockchain's CDP leader is Parrot Protocol. There we go. MSOL, right? Marinade Finance leads Solana's liquid staking apps and Quarry is the leading protocol in terms of yield. The largest lending application on Solana this week is Solent with 575.3 million locked. So Solent is, is another one of our constituents, right? So we'll talk about that towards the end. But so definitely Solana has a decentralization problem. And I'm, I'm not bashing Solana at all. That's something that people have said. And people always say, well, every, pretty much every single protocol has this problem. I think with the exception of Ethereum, because Ethereum has something along the line of 6,400 validators to Solana's 1,000 plus or so. So the number 6,000, 1,000 doesn't sound like anything more than 100 to regular people sounds like a lot. But that's a decentralization is something to think about when you're investing in crypto, whatever you choose to invest in. That's definitely a, a concern if you are a decentralization person. All right, now let's check out Marinade's other news, right? Um, now, because I'm in Taiwan and in Taiwan, we speak Chinese, right? Chinese, Taiwanese, Hakka a few other languages we have quite a few aboriginal languages well. marinate finance finally supports chinese this looks like traditional chinese as well that's chinese spoken in hong kong taiwan singapore malaysia some parts of indonesia most of the sort of chinese communities living outside of china so uh, you might have friends as well whose english is not great and i find a lot of these sort of crypto documents themselves the English is very written in a very complicated way, but I guess the sort of complexity leads to clarity when it comes to explaining stuff. But it just means that if your first language is not English, it's hard to understand. So if you are a Chinese speaking person, 
you now have the option to understand or, or stake your Solana or to understand solely and marinate in Chinese, which is pretty cool. The last thing I wanted to mention as well is so now near protocol and marinate stake Solana can now be staked on uh, Aldrin. And when you're staking this stuff, you're earning rewards in marinate, right? You're earning rewards in Rin, which is the token native token of Aldrin. You're also earning ABR. So that's really cool. You're staking near protocol, you're staking marinate stake Solana. And together you're getting like 82.51% APR. And the fees for 24 hours are a little bit high, $32. It doesn't have a lot staked for $121,000 sort of TVL locked at the moment. But it is a great opportunity if you do have near and marinate stake Solana to get some good APR at the moment. If you forgot what near protocol is founded by one of these like really smart young I believe, um, but this is a climate neutral. That's really important. The environment is important. High speed and low transaction fee layer one blockchain. So layer one like Ethereum, layer one like Solana, layer one like Avalanche. And these are all sort of the basic layers of crypto. If you are not familiar with Neo Protocol and you'd like me to talk about it, you'd like us to do an episode about it, please let me know speak to us on telegram discord or twitter i'd be happy to put something together like another five to ten minute video all right so marinade has a lot going for it some of the other protocols not so much but anyway let's keep going today we are going to talk about composability as well i keep wanting to say compostability like it's compost but no composability so what is Composability is the general ability of components of a system to be recombined into larger structures and for the output of one to be the input of another. Like that, that's pretty complicated, but it's just like the blocks, right? So if you imagine some building blocks, right, you can remove one part and put another part in another place, and then you have a totally new structure, right? In simple terms, right? The best example is Lego, where every piece can connect to every other piece. Which brings us to the next point on compostability. Now, compostability is is a it's actually a systems design terminology or a systems design principle. It means that something can be broken down and its parts can be used in other other ways. So, what we do in compostability is very similar to money label, in which all these different protocols, you know, these lending or borrowing or derivatives and exchange, they can exist in their own right. But at the same time, you can use them in other ways. So, for example, you could you could pair them up together. For example, cream. What cream does is to take compound, comp and ave, uh, and uniswap. So it it brings lending and exchange together as two different pieces coming together into this new platform that they are creating. So it's really compostable because these protocols are very versatile and you could just add them together into to like a Lego brick and build different kind of cool infrastructure around it. All right, then it says, within crypto, composability is the ability of decentralized apps, right? DApps and DAOs to effectively clone and integrate one another. Synta syntactic. I practice this a lot of times, but... I still messed it up, syntactic composability, and for software components such as tokens and messages to be interoperable between them. So morphological composability. So Ethereum already achieves synthetic composability pretty well. Every smart contract on the protocol is public and can be called by another. So can be called as sort of can be connected by another, which means that any software logic only has to be worked out once before it is available for the reuse by the entire ecosystem. In practice, this means that any Ethereum dApp can use Uniswap's contracts to manage token exchanges or organizations. So, so basically, right, composability means interconnections, means working better together. And I guess this is the future of Web3, right? Being able to reuse open source components is a superpower that makes building in Web3 extremely efficient. Okay, so the reason we're talking about composability is because a Serum had a hackathon, it happened earlier this month and says we hosted an in-depth discussion about the composability and everything else involved the ecosystem with the projects that one can with the projects that won the convergence hackathon 
are boosting network effects across Solana. The subject of composability has been one of the harder topics lately, specifically on the Solana space. All right, so they talk about composability right there, and there's the whole idea of Lego right there. And the guy says, as a former Web2 builder, I'm amazed how composability is enabling us to go faster and faster. Solana is pretty fast. We are integrating with protocols and have access to 100 million of TVL. And when I was building on Web2, it used to take me weeks to wait for Facebook to approve the access to my API. Okay, definitely an advantage of composability. <laughs> All right, so both of these articles, as usual, will be down in the links for the podcast on the YouTube and with the links in whatever your podcast player is. All right, let's move on. So if you guys don't know, Radium has their own accelerator platform. And so it's called Accelerator, which is pretty cool. A nice play in words. So it says, Zebek is launching an accelerator, multi-sig treasury management system and streaming payments. Now, today we're going to highlight the payments part because that is something I'm familiar with. We're excited to announce that on March 15th, Zebek will be launching on Accelerator. Zebek is a continuous settlement protocol that aims to transform payroll, right? Payroll is what companies do. They have that every month to pay their employees, cash flows, token investing by allowing users to send payments and distributions every second. Uh, Zebek is launching the world's first on-chain payroll product with a full tax withholding built-in and the first debit card for Solana wallets. That's really the Zebek ecosystem is currently providing the infrastructure for more than 250 projects. That's impressive. And sort of goes into the token details, right? So how you can participate if you're on Radium. So the IDO on Radium. When is the IDO? That opens on March 15th, which is today at 4 p.m. UTC. So that's at 8 p.m. That's at 12 a.m. Taiwanese time. It closes at 4 p.m. UTC. Oh, no. So the pool's already open. This is 4 p.m. UTC. So it opened at lunchtime, Taiwanese time. It will close at 12 a.m. today. It is, this is 12 hours right there. There'll be one ray pool available for the ZPC raise. Allocation will be determined by a lottery system. Allocation for one winning lottery ticket, 105 USDC. Pretty low. There'll be four snapshot deadlines to determine the ticket allotment. Eligibility at least 100 race staked in a race single sided staking prior to the seven day staking deadline below and successful USDC deposit once the pool opens. Ray must remain staked until the pool opens. So this is probably not going to be for by the time you guys are listening to this podcast and this watching this video, this staking, this sort of ideal opportunity will be closed. So definitely something to take into consideration if you're a radium user or if you're a solar user and you want to get some radium maybe you want to burn some solar for some radium so you need to stake ray single-sided staking so just stake your ray on radium and then you'll be eligible for whatever ideos come their way at the 30-day deadline as well so there are a lot of rules 90-day deadline as well that's pretty impressive 180 Users receive tickets according to the ticket allotment above. However, for each ticket to be counted in the lottery, users must deposit USDC for each ticket they wish to have entered. Example, Dave has 29 tickets, Carol has 21 tickets, and Alice has 12 tickets. As a better example, Bob staked 300 Ray before the seven-day deadline and will receive three tickets. So he gets $300 of USDC. That's pretty impressive. Very cool. As uh, ZBC, Adio on Radium. What is Zebek? We've talked about this already. So definitely something to look into if you want to understand the way Radium does for IDOs. And let's have a look at what about payroll. Because I used to be a payroll accountant when I graduated from university in Massachusetts in 2005, I believe, or 2004. It's a long time ago, somewhere around that time. And you're looking at a website now, it's called Ceridian because Ceridian was the software that I learned when I was a payroll accountant. A very expensive software, but a very useful software to sort of manage the way a company's payroll works. So if you can imagine this now, this is like a centralized piece of software that you have running on your service in your company. It calculates you know, HR, unified pay and time, compliance features. I remember we had to do garnishes, right, as a payroll accountant. So if somebody has something that they haven't paid and the court says, hey, X company, can you please garnish this employee's wages and then send them to the state so we can pay this person? Usually this kind of stuff evolves around child support. But yeah, payroll, right? Payroll is software has existed for forever. I think blockchain with its being able to see what is on there, being able to see what happens. Clarity is awesome. And I think uh, Zebek is very interesting. And in, in turn, Radium for a launching a on-chain payroll system on crypto on the blockchain which is awesome 
So let's keep going. We're at the 15 minute mark and let's talk about Tulip. Now, one thing I have reached out to the Tulip guys, right? I checked their medium, I checked their discord and telegram, not much news. So today what I thought we'd do, right, is we would look at the APRs, we'd look at the pools, something very short, but something interesting. If you uh, have some Tulip or again, if you're burning solely to get some Tulip. So Tulip Auto Balls, Auto Compound LP farms, swapping the token emissions into more LP every 10 minutes to add to your balance. So for example, you're yield farming and you usually on other chains or other protocols or other systems, you have to physically claim your, your rewards or your emissions and then restake them yourself. But with Tulip, all of this is done automatically. So really you're getting the best possible yields, which is pretty awesome. And something I talked about this on the previous episode that it's something that everyone should try. It is nerve wracking. I did this last week on Polygon. Oh no, two weeks ago on Polygon, perhaps. And oh, Tulip also has a V2. So let's have a look at V2. And V2, so the top performing highest TVL is Ray Ethereum LP, Ray USDT LP. So this is all Rays, right? Ray USDC. But it looks like just from a cursory glance, the best performing yield farming opportunity is uh, Ray USDT with 66.95% yield. And I wonder if this shows what you're actually getting paid in. Um, this shows the fees as well. All right, that's cool. Okay, and let's go back to the V1. So on the V1 side, right, a cursory glance, we see Atlas, right, Star Atlas, the very famous Solana game that we have mentioned on our podcast, on the video numerous times, Star Atlas and Radium, again, LP, you're getting daily APR of 0.18% and a yearly APY of 95.52%, which is pretty. And there are some pretty decent ones, right, a Polis and Ray, 85%, ooh, we have Gene and USDC, uh, 124%, and uh, Gene and Ray. So something for you guys to have a look and by yourself if you have time. So the last piece of news today, we're going to talk about Solens news. So this is from, so you you guys know about Dogecoin. Solana has its own dog coin, or all right, it's called Samo Komoye de Coin. The dog pool contains Samo, the premier community token and symbol of the Solana ecosystem. Over time, this pool will grow to contain your favorite dog themed meme coins, right? Earn interest and borrow Samo. And there's a little cool video, right? I think we can watch a little bit of for very flashy, very cool on Solent. Now let's have a look at the Solent pool. All right. Uh, the dog pool currently contains Samo, but right, the cool thing about this is that it might be holding our other favorite dog coins. So that would be Dogecoin, right? D O G E. There will be Shiba Inu, right? As well, really popular coins, right? Not on Solana. So maybe they'd be using the wormhole bridge at some point. Have your own like pool where it's a Semo, Shiba Inu, Dogecoin as well. And then all this combined into USDC. And you can get some APY for supplying, right? 0.77%, 1.43%. 1 Not very high, but decent as well as an opportunity for you to use coins that you might otherwise not to be using because they're just sitting in your centralized exchange or they're just sitting in your MetaMask somewhere. And this is it, guys. This is all the news for today's episode. We are just under 20 minutes, so I think this is pretty much what the episode will be. I hope you liked the episode so far. Would you like me to talk about Solana news in general and all the other projects as well? I can do that in the episode. Uh, this week, Thursday, I'll be talking to our head of IT who just joined us in 2022. His name's Joseph. He's very new to crypto, so we'll be talking about some very sort of entrant sort of noob questions about crypto. I'm, I'm still new. I'm learning all the time. I think a lot of people in crypto are learning all the time. So if you have any questions for him, you now contact us on social media. Besides being very knowledgeable when it comes to IT matters, right? I'm sure he's got lots of, of different things that we can ask. Otherwise, yep, yeah, see you guys later on in the week. So we'll do the episode with Joseph on Thursday. And then I should have it up by Friday if I'm lucky, if not a Saturday as usual. All right, guys, take care and talk to you later.